the discovery of gravitational waves has sent ripples through the scientific community, which promises to reveal exciting new insights about the cosmos. Astrophysicist and science communicator Emma Osborne, who is conducting PhD research at the University of Southampton, has greatly offered her experience in this field to tell us a little more about the discovery and what it means. Well, Emma, thank you so much for coming in again, and maybe just for the people at home who aren't quite familiar, what does an astrophysicist do again? Um, well, we try and study the universe to understand what it's like and understand the laws of physics that govern the universe. Fantastic. And so, actually, this discovery is something quite big in this field. Yeah, this is huge, this discovery. Uh, so the first breakthrough came um, just, uh, uh, sorry, two years ago, uh, when gravitational waves were detected for the first time. And that was huge because Einstein predicted them 100 years beforehand. And he thought it would be impossible to ever detect them. And it was literally almost 100 years to the day where we got this signal come through, which was fantastic. And since then, a few more black holes crashing into each other has been detected. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, but this time, for the first time ever, two neutron stars crashed into each other from over 130 million light years away, and their signal was detected on Earth by the LIGO and Virgo uh, gravitational wave detectors. Wow, I mean, and that's the thing is obviously they're these massive celestial bodies that have kind of crashed into each other but the signals taken a long time to get to us yeah that's because they're really far away <laughs> quite simply uh, so light travels is the fastest thing in the universe and uh, so we use that as a measure of how far things are so it takes light eight minutes to get from the sun to the earth mm -hmm. and so when something takes 130 million light years it really gives you an idea so what we're looking at is something that happened at the time of the dinosaurs or maybe even beforehand if it's over 130 million years wow. ago and I suppose where you were telling me before that actually this is uh, a lot of sort of real world applications now we have a greater understanding of where some of the most common elements in the universe come from yes exactly so stars like our sun burn fuel mm -hmm. and they produce elements such as hydrogen helium all the way up to iron but when they get to iron they tend to have run out of fuel and start to die mm -hmm. but there's a lot more elements that we find on earth that are a lot heavier than iron and it's been a mystery as to where these elements come from but from these neutron stars crashing into each other because light was observed alongside with the gravitational wave signal mm -hmm. we could look at that to see what elements were in there and scientists actually found gold and platinum which are some of the heavier elements mm -hmm. so you can think the jewelry you're wearing may well have come from neutron stars crashing into each other and it's potentially an awful lot older than maybe we think it is yeah absolutely very old and i mean sp speaking of kind of practical elements then so what does this mean for the scientific community moving forward what information do we hope that this can tell us about our universe well <laughs> <laughs> <Briefly. laughs> yeah sure so um the combination of having a gravitational wave signal with a light signal means that we now entered what's called the era of multi-messenger astronomy wow so, Sending text messages to stars. Yeah, <laughs> yeah definitely, I like that. Uh, so it's a bit more that we can see things with gravitational waves that we can't see with light, such as black holes. That's why black holes are black. But there are things that the combination of um, gravitational waves and light tells us so much more. So, for example, astronomers have been seeing flashes of uh, gamma ray bursts, they're called. They're very short. And they come from different parts in the universe, but nobody knows what's causing them. Turns out it's neutron stars crashing into each other. So we couldn't see the neutron stars on their own with the light. We could see their gravitational wave signal. So it's the marrying up of the two. And that's going to unveil a lot more about things that exist in the universe. And you were saying there, obviously, well, it's a theory that Einstein had, unfortunately, never lived long enough to kind of see it be proven. But actually, then, it's the next step going forward is that as technology improves, our understanding improves, um, could this then be used not only as a way of understanding the cosmos, but maybe to explore it further? Yeah, absolutely. So the scientific endeavours that we do today, 
we don't really know how we're going to be able to use them but it can be in all kinds of fascinating ways so one of the big ones was um, Einstein's theory of general relativity which is where gravitational waves come from he said that time passes slower in a gravitational field okay. so when you're in an aeroplane time's actually going quicker for you or you're aging quicker than you would be if you're on wow. the earth but this has even bigger consequences so the clocks that are on satellites that orbit the Earth, they're running at a different speed to the clocks on Earth. So the ones that run your GPS, your sat-nav, they have to constantly be reset to match Earth time. Otherwise, your sat-nav wouldn't work. And you might be trying to get from Portsmouth to Southampton, but end up in Winchester. <laughs> <laughs> so actually, this, all this science has practical real-world applications that we use yeah. every day then? Yeah, so one uh, really exciting thing that I found out about recently was the lasers that are used in the gravitational wave detectors. Mm -hmm. Because they're, they're measuring such small distances, have actually been used with stem cells and to kick stem cells into start producing um, uh, material in the lab and this is very new and it's looking at bones but you know it's gravitational waves and neutron stars crashing into <laughs> each other can have applications towards stem cells and helping beat cancer. Well, it certainly sounds like it's an amazing subject and something that if we had a whole hour to talk about, we could probably feel quite easily. Unfortunately, that's all the time we have for today. Emma, thank you so much for coming in. Thank you for having me.